Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lecture on the CSR NET Mathematics July 2024. Today I will explain you how you can solve the complex analysis questions which was asked in the part C. Myself Dr. Harishkar you can follow my YouTube channel where you can find the playlist of CSR UGC NET and you can see that I have uploaded already the complete July 2024 solutions with the help of the shortcut tricks. Apart from them you can also watch the other lectures which are available in this playlist which will help you to solve the CSR NET examination in a very very simple manner. Don't forget to subscribe my YouTube channel so that when I uploaded my next video you will get the notification. Now the first question is question ID 704080 and the question is related to the essential singularity and the removable singularity. This question is one of the easiest question in this July 2024. That's why I'm very sure that your reaction will be look like say this when you saw this question in your examination. Why? Because you already watched my this previous lecture before going to the examinations. So what is the shortcut tricks as I told you how you can check about the removable singularity and the essential singularity. You need to compute the limit of the FJ at the point whatever the point is given to you. If this limit if this limit is my finite then we call as the removable singularity. If this limit is my infinity then we call as the pole. If this limit does not exist then we call as the essential singularity. Now we can apply the same trick for solving this problem. So look at that. Let's see firstly limit of the G as at x is equal to 0. So what is the limit of the G? So it will be 1 over Z. Fz is sine 1 over Z into sine Z. Fine. Now we all know sine Z over Z as limit z approaches 0 is my 1 or you can also say that the sine of z is approximately with the z whenever z approaches to the 0. So this limit becomes my sine z of this case because this limit this quantity is approximately with the z so this value will be cancelled out. Otherwise you can simply use this limit. Now what is the limit of this? Limit does not exist fine so if the limit does not exist what is the meaning of that that is my essential singularity you can see that if limit does not exist then we call as the essential singularity now same we can do for the limit z approaches 0 for the fz so what will happen limit z approaches 0 1 over z into sine 1 over z now as z approaches 0 this becomes the infinity but make sure the sine of z is a complex number fine and sine of z is not a bounded function so what you can say that this is limit of this quantity does not exist. So once the limit of this does not exist then again you can see f is my essential singularity at the point z is equal to 0. So that's the right answers are my a and b are the correct answers. So if you want more concepts and more prop, uh, practice problems related to the singularities you must watch about my this lecture. Now next question f is the entire function such that which of the following statement is the correct. In whole examination of the July 2024 this is one of this is the simplest question asked in the examination and definitely your reaction will be look like say this one. What is the shortcut tricks? As I told you in my previous lecture, whenever you have the function of this case plus f of z is my entire. What does it mean? This implies f of z is my constant function. Fine. Now in this case, k is my 2024 and f z is my entire given. So f is my constant function. So if f of z is my constant function, it can be 2024, it can be 2025, it can be 3057 or it can be anything which satisfies this property. So clearly say which of the following is necessary to. So since only 2024 is not necessary to, it can be of 3057, it can be of the 
ten thousand. It can be of the anywhere. Fine. Now, how you can say about the other options is the bijective and the injective. Now, since f of z is my constant, say say c. Fine. And we all know constant function is not one one. And you can easily see that. Why? Because we all know twenty twenty five is equal to c. F of three zero one zero is also c. But clearly, say two zero two five is not equal to three zero one zero. Now, once the function is not one one, then definitely it is not bijective. So the correct answer of this problem is only B is my correct answer. And you can see that's why I'm asking you. This is the simplest question in this July 2024, and you will get the 4.75 marks easily in the examination. Don't forget to like and comment on this video to support my effort. And for more detail about these lectures, you can must watch about my PY question series of the identity theorems, and you can watch about these concepts. How you can solve such kind of the problem in an easy manner? Okay, look at this another one. Which of the following condition ensure the power series will define an an entire function? Fine. Now, again, it's a very simple question, but they are just try to represent the given statement in a different manner. And if you are look like say very confusing, how you can solve that? Make sure once you already watch my this lecture, then you can get an idea how you can solve this problem. What I told you in my this lecture is whenever you have the power series, find this is my power series. And what is the concept for the analytic function? Whenever you have the power series, you always look about the radius of convergence. Always remember. whatever the question is given to you you always look about the radius of convergence and if radius of convergence is zero then the power series converges only at the center fine and when the radius of convergence is infinity then power series is converging for all the values of the z in the complex plane and this is the shortcut tricks i have mentioned in this lecture now if the function is entire then we all know the radius of convergence is infinity so your target what is your target your target is to find the radius of convergence of these three four cases are there fine now how you can find the radius of convergence first of all this is the power series what is the center center is my zero fine then how you can find the radius of convergence that is a center minus pole fine now look at that if the power series convergent for every z that means it converges at zero it converges at one it converges at two and so on so what is the largest value so largest value is my infinity fine so what is the radius of convergence for the first case it is infinity so once it is infinity that means the power series will converge to the entire function second case r is equal to convergent for every r again if it is one that is on the real line fine so what is the largest interval is minus infinity to plus infinity so that's again the radius of convergence is my infinity look at the third case it convergent for Two raised to power n, so that means a two, then four, then eight, then sixteen. What is the largest? What is the largest? What is the largest z for which the power series convergent? It's infinity. Then again, r is my infinity. Yes, it is a power series convergent. It is defined the entire function. Look about the last case. Power series is convergent for when n is equal to integer. That's one over five. Then one over twenty-five, then one over one twenty-five, and so on. So ultimately, it will converge to the zero. So what will happen? The radius of convergence is what is the largest interval? The largest number is my one over five. So that means this power series is convergent only when mod of z is less than one over five. 
so what does it means the radius of convergent is 1 over 5 which is not infinity so this option is cancel out so the right option is a b c are my right answer of this problem for more detail you must watch about my this power series lecture look at this another question f is given to be the entire function such that for every integer k there exists an infinite set xk such that f of z is my 1 over k for every z belongs to the z k and what is the k k is my xk that's x1 x2 just like say it look like say f of z is my constant function fine then which of the following statements are necessary true i think it's a very simple there exists an infinite set x such that f of z is equal to 0 okay there exists an infinite set so i assume if there exists an infinite set fine if there exists an infinite set such that f of z is equal to 0 for all z in the x what does it means f is identically 0 fine by which theorem by using identity theorem fine but you can see that it is a zero but i can say f of is identically zero which is contradiction to the fact that f of z is 1 over k on this set so that means f of z is equal to zero for all z is not true fine because we have an infinite set in which the function is a constant but not a zero but in this case we have obtained f is identically zero look at the second option there exists a non empty closed set such that f of z is zero again if i assume that there exists a closed set x such that f of z is zero again he said for all z what does it means again f is identically zero fine and which is again contradiction to the fact that f of z is a constant but not always identically zero so what you can observe that this a and b statements are look like a similar fine the way of represent representation is the different but the way, but the options and the meaning are always same look at the c option there exists a set xk there the, sorry the set xk is unbounded for each k greater than equal to 1 is unbounded so let's say assume that xk is bounded fine so if xk is bounded then given that f of is 1 over k and f is my entire fine so what does it means so by using if because it's a bounded so if it is a bounded then by using maximum modulo principle what does it means if by using the maximum modulo principle f of z is my constant on this xk fine but there is a contradiction why because for every k greater than equal to 1 but xk is my infinite set x k is given to be the infinite set so that means our assumption that x k is bounded is the wrong option so that means x k is my unbounded is the correct option look at the last option if there exist if there exist a bounded sequence z k so if there exist a bounded sequence z k such that for each k greater than 1 f has a zero what is the meaning of the f zero is that means your target is to prove or disprove this value now which things come in your mind when you look about the complex analysis or any of the sequence which is bounded plus f is my entire fine f is my entire z is my bounded sequence so whenever you think about the bounded sequence you always look about the bolzano Wittstrass theorem. What this means? That means there exists a sequence 
xk which converges to the gate zero fine such that fine now it is given that z of xk will be what is the value of the f of zk because for every k which is greater than 1 what is the value of the f of zk which goes to the zero as k approaches infinity because k is greater than equal to 1 so k for a very very large number f of xk will goes to the zero so what does it means if f of xk belongs to the zero and f is my entire what does it means this implies f of z zero will goes to the zero what does it means f has a zero and which is what is the zero is z zero is my zero of the f of z yes this option is the correct option so c and d are my correct option of this problem so you can see that all these questions are explained with the help of very very simple approach don't forget to like and comment on this video and you must watch about my this playlist and i am very sure that once you watch this complete lectures on the singularity differentiability continuity your confidence level will be very high and you will get the more confidence while solving the problem i hope you can like share and comment on this video and don't forget to subscribe my youtube channel best of luck students happy learning